Hello again SG Beers, I'm Companion Wolf, aka Rob Wolf on Facebook. This tutorial is actually a showcase of some of the new features for Smile Game Builder version 1.0.6.0. The updates for this version are pretty big and I'm super excited to showcase them for you. They were released today, but by the time this video is uploaded it'll be Christmas Eve. And cue the intro. The first update, in my opinion, is an extremely useful feature. In events, at the top right is display mode, which allows you to toggle between the flowchart, which we are familiar with by now, and the event contents, the text box. Now up to this point in the flowchart, we've only been able to copy and paste events one at a time. So if you needed to copy multiple parts or blocks here you now can you'll click the start of where you want to copy hold down the shift key and then click where you want to cut or copy and you'll be able to do just that and then you can paste it here or you can paste it in The normal flowchart it'll be exactly the same and you can double click on any of the event commands hmm they have yet to translate cancel into English anyway you can double click on any of the event commands in here and it will bring up the event panel you can also add by using the insert event panel and then adding a command. Notice that all inserted events, whether they're copied or pasted, appear above the highlighted line. And I think over time you'll be using the text event contents more frequently, especially for those more complex events. But the cool thing is you can still use the flowchart for a more visual review of your events. The next big update is that when Smileboom demoed their VR system at the Digital Games Expo 2016 in Akihabara, Japan, it was highly received. After extensive playtesting and of course having lots of fun with it, they put it in SGB. Unfortunately, this is an area I cannot use at all since VR is way out of my budget. So I can only tell you that it's there and nothing else. And the big update, one that you've all been waiting for, is... 3D Battles. Yes! So, it's in the edit game data, game settings, and then battle. And you can switch between the two battle modes. And subsequently you can change the camera settings for the battle just to give your combat a little bit of flair. You can change them for the start of the battle, which is the battle intro right to the battle start, when players attack, when they use skills, when they use items, and the final result, i.e. victory dance. And as with the other camera settings, you can set the camera angles and coordinates to suit your needs or preferences, and then preview them. Camera movement speed is just that, setting the speed at which the camera transitions from start to end points. Zero is actually instant, so I really don't see any point in that. Um, change camera speed simply sets the speed, the speed range at which the transition takes place from start to end points. It can remain constant, which is based on the movement speed. You can have the speed increase gradually, decrease and gradually, or change from fast to slow down.
And the final big update is event and player directions, which is under the advanced variables events direction and player directions. This means that we can now properly set up the compass HUD directions from tutorial 9 pictures. Rather than just relying on key press directions, we can now use player direction to display the compass points based on the, the direction the player is facing. It'll work as it should whether you're using a normal view or a first person view. And I'll cover that in the next tutorial. The other events commands that they have added are stop sound effects which is very handy if you want to stop the sound effect in the middle of something or because of a condition or something like that and then and then the allow and disallow player control and allow and disallow camera control have been unified so you can toggle it on or off more easily And of course, in the camera control, they've added whether you can allow or disable the zooming or the camera switching. And the player control is basically that. It works in exactly the same way as before. Um, also, another update that they have done is also in the edit game data. And I believe it would be under system graphics yes it is you can change the battle icons escape and return and the resultant screen to display new items right now we can play test it quickly with the cave slime to see the 3D battle in action. Incidentally, the background, the battle background is actually the cave itself. So wherever the monster is in relation to the position in the cave, that's what will appear. And as you can see, the escape icon has changed. Nice little 3D Final Fantasy esque victory dance, and as you see. In the monster results, new is flashing to indicate a new, newly acquired item. And talking of battles, and when you place a battle, you can also change the monster position. Click and drag within that box, and the position will change. This option is only for 3D battles. And if you have 2D battles turned on, then it just won't be available. You'll just have the battle test instead. And finally, in the game file, when you create a public game file, you can change the icon when you're ready to export your game into a playable format. Now I'll just use one. I pre-created as you can see it will display the icon and then it'll automatically resize when you play test it in the top left next to the title you will see the icon I think it will be the 16 by 16 one and that concludes this tutorial showcase Note that there will not be another tutorial this Sunday since it's Christmas, however you celebrate it, and even if you don't, have a happy day. In the next one, which will now officially be in the year 2017, as I said, 
I'll focus on play direction and also, as I mentioned, we'll set the compass HUD up properly. We will also be able to cover things like opening chests or reading signs only from the front and opening and going through doors depending on the player's direction. As always, give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials because there are a lot of them coming next year. And visit me on Twitter, Facebook and the RPG Maker blogs. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.